<laughs> well, good morning from Little Creek Bee Ranch. We have another cool lesson today. If you're following along and learning and watching, and that's cool. I've been trying to make this lesson go for for some time, just things haven't come together. So we're in the garage slash shop slash wood room. <laughs> you need to take what you can get, you know. So it's late March 2021. Bee season's like flying in. And so we went from quiet, just doing nothing, to all of a sudden panic mode. You know, it's okay. It's how it works. Okay, so we're going to put a lot of medium frames together. So there was this order for a hive set that came in from Wichita, Kansas, which is cool. And I thought, well, shoot, as I build it, as I build it out for the lady, I'll just film all these different parts and pieces. So, so this is the frame part. We're putting together a bunch of frames for her to go in her, her hive set. So, so let me start off. These are medium frames. We're going to do some medium frames. So let me start off with explaining if I can, the top bar. This is a top bar of a frame. Now this is directed, this lesson is directed at new beekeepers, new to intermediate, okay? So if you're like advanced, this is gonna be boring, you know? That's okay. So here's the top bar, now, now watch this. So so these are the tabs, this area's a tab, all right, same, same in there, the other end. Okay, but on the top bar we have this piece of wood. It's called a cleat. Or a wedge, I call it a cleat, and it's held on. I don't know if you can see it, just a little strip of wood in there. It's you know, laser cut probably. It's, it's all right, very nice. Yeah, it just pops out. Okay, so this one had just already fallen out. But what I want to show you is when we, well, when you're putting them together, I'm standing behind the camera. There's a fat side and a skinny side. See that? It's the thin side, skinny, do it this way. skinny side, fat side. Okay? And the reason that's important, let me set this to the side, is when you're putting together frames, a lot, a lot of beekeepers have never been told this. There's six points of anchor. One, your staple or nail. Two, you know. And the bottom, whoops, three, four, and here, here comes here comes the two that they don't know about. Five, and the other side is six. And five and six are going horizontal. And the reason it is, is there's lots of stress vertical when we pull up, because the frames are all stuck together. So over time, over time, we want a nail or a brad in there horizontal to help hold this stress that wants to work up and away from them. And there's been a couple of times I pulled up some old frames and here, come, here comes the top bar and everything else the wax and combs <laughs> left in the hive. Yeah, it's a weird day when that happens. <laughs> it's like, what the heck, man? So my point to you is that fat side is where your nail or brad's going to go. There's no room in the skinny side. Got the idea? That's why I showed you the fat side and the skinny side. Okay, so let's put some frames together. And I'm using an air stapler just for speed and we're doing a lot. So I, I like rigid air tools. And I'm using a, a quarter crown stapler, inch and a quarter long staple, and an inch and a quarter long brad for the horizontal nail. So I'm going to Turn off the compressor so we don't have to listen to that. Let's see if I can uh, work right here. And this is a frame jig. A frame jig. Now, this is, you, uh, you're going to have different frame jigs. I, I recommend you create or make or buy one like this. So, so if you're the woodworking kind of person, let me just throw some quick numbers at you so you can do this on your own. So this slide board is 40 inches long. It's uh, two and a quarter inches tall. The uh, side panels are oh, 31 and three quarters. And the height is five inches. And the end panel is 18 and a half 
and yet five inches again high, okay? So that gives you some quick dimensions, all right? And the cut inside on the end is, oh, let's see, from the top of the wood is inch and three quarters. And there was a little slop in there, I had to take up slop. It gives you a rough estimate of, you can create your own, okay? But I made this to hold uh, 22, he did 22 that way. Okay, so check this out. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna kinda do my thing. These are the side pieces that go in. This is a medium we're doing, and they just stand in there like that. Because to do this individual frame with a nail, <laughs> it's like chasing a ball with grease, man. It doesn't work, it's just very frustrating. So you really do need a frame jig, okay? So we hold 22 frames in here. And there are a few, a few little caveats to making sure. Now they can only go in one way. That's upside down. So the top bar won't fit. Top, it won't, it won't fit. But it will fit here, right? Okay? So there's only, it's like you can't mess it up. There are some mistakes that beekeepers make. That horizontal brad or nail, that's one that's commonly done. If you don't put it in, later down the road, when you go and start uh, torquing on a frame, and you go, whoa, that top bar came off. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's not funny when it happens. It's funny when you think back on it. Okay, using uh, tight bond glue, tight bond three. Yeah, if you can get the camera, tight bond three. The green duck, that's what I call it, green duck. Okay, so so now here's, here's another mistake that newer beekeepers make. A little dab of do ya, a little. Boop, that's even. I mean, we're talking like almost a drip. And uh, too many times uh, students have put like gobs. And I'll go halfway, I, got a, I have a mark on my board, it's about halfway. This is a, is a good lesson for, you know, kind of basic beginner beekeepers, even intermediate beekeepers. Pick up some tips and tricks and uh, make your glue go for it. Now, when I put in the top bars, I, I like to have the cleats all one way. It doesn't really matter, but that's what I personally like to do. Okay, so a mallet. Just tap it down. That's all. I'll grab a handful. Set over here. Mallet, tap it in, and when I'm not filming and not teaching a lesson, uh, you can go a lot faster. I'm thinking of all these little things that c catch you and that I've learned over time, right? Okay, another one. So a big, a little too stiff. A big frame jig like that is. Now they make smaller ones that you can get at Date Ant, Man Lake. They're ten frame. Whatever, it's up to you. I like I like this one. I would actually. Uh, prefer to make one that holds 40, but that'd be almost twice as long. Okay, so back to wood glue, a drip, ooh, like that. Doesn't take much. And all the B classes I taught or helped teach way, way back, boy, stu students were like, <laughs> They, did, they didn't know. They didn't understand, you know. I'm not, not making fun of anybody. You're learning. Just locking it on. No, no. Just a little bit. Keep a towel handy to wipe off excess. You know? um, I pick up uh, my frames from uh, Man Lake. Um, I don't know. There you go. 
tighter. Uh, a box of 100 at a time. Nice, really nice. Smooth, smooth, clean cuts. Let's see, do that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Take two turbo. Not too terrible long. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last one. All right. See that? Da da. There we go. Now there shouldn't be any glue underneath. There it is. No glue. Running out, you know. Running out. Okay, so so I don't need those out of my way. Let me get these on Kindle <laughs> out of my way. All right. Okay, so check it out. Let's see. Let's do. Um, we're going to this. Okay, here comes staple. I'll staple this end, this end, and the top just gets one. Oh, ooh. Ah. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes they don't always go straight. Ooh. Ooh. That's some. We got some pressure on it now. It's okay. You might have some pop up. See how they kind of pop up. That's all right. We'll set them down. Now, if you're using air tools like this, the force is going to knock off some of those wedges. That's okay. Just keep them. Keep your fingers out of the way. Okay, done. That was easy. Okay, watch the bottom side. Okay, so here's the wedges that fell out, or the cleats, whatever. It's, ow. And sometimes there's splinters. It's okay. We've been waiting a long time to kind of do something like a lesson like this. I want to get it pushed down. Okay, so now we're on the bottom. <laughs> Same as the top. A dab, okay. Ooh, it's a little. You just almost touch it, and so I'll do half of them. You'll do a lot of this over time. As time goes on, you'll get better, and better. You'll need some fresh new frames. Okay, stepping over here to grab 22 bottoms. Now check this out and make sure that you can see this first. Yep, cool, okay. Okay, check it out. So, so I have really th three surfaces that I'm sensitive to, the side, sides, and the bottom, but the bottom has this groove. These are called wedge top groove bottom frames, and I like these frames a lot. I like these frames a lot. So what I do is I'll take it sideways 
and just tap it in both ends and turn it 180. Tap it in both sides and that way I get glue on both sides, see? I got glue on both sides. And there's still glue down here and I'll just set it in. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just, <laughs> just set it in there, Kendall. <laughs> Kind of tight. Yeah, the first one is. The ends, the ends seem to be pretty tight. Okay. On its side, front and back, this side, get some glue on it. Now I get good cover. Now, why is that important? These bees, <laughs> creatures, think like a beaver. Think, think like a beaver. A beaver just does overkill. A beaver, a beaver just overdoes everything. Well, that's what that's what bees are like. So when they stick something together, holy crap. It's it's like cement. And they can literally stick this stuff frames, wood frames, so tightly together with propolis, it just comes apart. So <laughs> you do the best you can. You know, I'm not trying to make a mess with wood glue. And we want our frames to last a long time. Take care of your equipment the best that you can. You know, you and I have to be diligent, like how much you got left outside, setting, whatever. Try to put it, put it away. Everybody has lost a lot of bees this past month with a giant arctic blast shooting down all the way to south texas yeah man i get lots of calls lots of calls for bees now jeez super high demand any you know we teach a whole lot so if you're not you know in our local area here and you're watching and learning from us, I would highly recommend that you look at the personal advisor program. That's our sustainable beekeeping coaching program. And people, you know, I know people don't always understand. And they'll say, you're in Oklahoma and I'm in Nebraska and you can't teach me anything about bees. I said, no, no. No, it didn't quite work that way. That's a good thing too. Bees don't know state lines. Bees don't know county borders. Bees operate by a set of about 45 principles. Your environment may be just a little bit different than my environment, but the bees are the same. They operate by a set of principles, which is not being taught nearly enough in beekeeping. And once we get beekeepers learning principles, they go, holy crap, this is cool. Well, that's the point. <laughs> Why you... Why you want to fight and struggle and fuss with these creatures, man? They are super smart. They will outfox you all the time. They have the upper hand. And if you don't learn how they operate, yeah, they're going to put you in the mud. That's just honeybees. You got to bring your A game, man. So we teach a lot. That's cool. And we have students in Oklahoma and uh, Dallas, Texas area and um, Louisiana, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. Give a shout out to my students down in Dallas. Yo, Julie, I know you like are worried about your bees. Don't, man. Up and down we go. Okay. Just keep learning from me, man. Just keep learning. Shout out to Gene. Thank you, sir, for the recommendation for Ro R Rode Wireless Mics. How cool is that? We're on the Rode Wireless Mics right now, so it ought to sound really good. We'll be using those in the apiary. Shout out to Warren. Super stud, brand new cook. <laughs> I'm into all kinds of swarms last year. Holy cow, like a poster boy for swarms. That's cool. I love it. Great, man. Love it. Personal advisor program. 
go to littlecreekbranch.com, the personal advisor program page and study it. There's quite a bit there. We intentionally included a lot of value in the program. Why don't you study that on your own? Okay, simple, simple, simple. Okay, so the bottoms are in. Here we go. One, just, just one staple right through. And it kind of kind of boogers up the end a little bit. It's all right. He's bottom. Just not a lot of meat. Not, not a lot of meat right there on the end. Ooh. Man, pressure. I thought my pressure turned up pretty high. <laughs> yeah, kind of up high. It's okay. Okay, now let's get this done. Yeah. <laughs> Used to do this with brood nails. The long, thin brood nails and a hammer. Oh, God. That's frustrating. You know, if you're going to be a beekeeper and run anywhere from four to ten colonies, it would pay to invest in some air tools and a small compressor, at least a small one. Aye. Trying to get it made it up on the end, but I always do get a little bit concerned. Staples have a tendency to curl and bend as they go in the wood. Caught, caught part of my finger one time. That's <laughs> that'll wake you up. That'll wake you up. Okay, not too terrible drips. Just clean, you know. That's all. Now here come here comes the important part. Okay. <clears throat> get this turned back over not too bad when you have the right tools see how this works look at that boom how cool is that comes out okay out we go all right let's see if I can do this okay I'm going to change my Take my stapler off and put on <laughs> a brad the brad gun. Now here's here's what I'm after. Let's see how am I gonna do this so you can see this. Take right there. I'm gonna take one out of the middle. See if I take one out of the middle, remember I gotta put a horizontal nail in. Okay, so get the, any loose cleats, just take them out of the way. Set them to the side, you'll need them later. Okay, now let me come, da, da, da. let me come back around, show you what I'm getting ready to do. Near, 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 near. I don't have a, I'm looking, oh here it is, looking for a pin. Ah, there it is. Okay, so now here's my skinny side. Here's my fat side. Fat side. I'm going to try to put a brad right there. And there's not a lot of wiggle room. That's where I want that brad to go. Fat side, skinny side. And this one little thing is often overlooked by new beekeepers. Now I don't mark every frame with a pen. I'm just showing you. And it really needs to angle down and in. It's a weird one. And it's going to take you a few times to get used to doing it. You know, it's all right. But that's why you're watching lessons. So on a table... <laughs> Now this is maybe kind of weird. Uh, Brad guns upside down. 
And I'm used to the hose being the other way, so this is awkward for me. Okay, so fat side is to my left, and I put the lip, the tab of the top bar on the corner of the hive, or the cor hive, corner of the table. I'll roll it to me about 45 degrees. I've got my spot, angle it. There it is, I'm angled in this way and kind of down. Ta-da! And so now I don't have anything, I don't have anything sticking out. And I, ooh, hit my sweet spot almost on the exact spot. So do the other side. Upside down on the table. Angle a little bit. You'll find, you'll, you'll feel it. There it is. Ta-da! Now, I like to challenge myself. Here's 20 we'll do. And let's see if I can do, or 22, all of them without screwing it up. <laughs> you know, what is the likelihood? What's the likelihood that I can do that? I've got to get another tool. Oops. Another tool. Not very likely. <laughs> There's always one or two that goes astray. So I have a pair of dikes to roll it out, cut it, to get it out of the way. Uh, let's see, where am I going to put these? I don't have my boxes ready, so that's okay. And I find the fat side. Weird. This is a little weird for me because the hose fat side is on my left, your right. Okay. Gosh, jeepers, man. Holy. Good. So, okay, this is what this is like. It's weird. Okay, fat side is to my right. Now it's to my left. Ah, <laughs> see? What's the third, the third one out the gate? <laughs> see, I knew that wouldn't work. Okay, see, it's right there. No, we don't want that. That does no good for us. Okay, so I'm going to grab it, pinch it down tight, and just pull it through. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now I have a soft spot there, so still want to get one in. Let's see if I can do it. Now I just got to come fat sides to my left. Gotta get up here. Fat sides to my left. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, all right. Did it. Sweet. Okay, I'll show you again. All these little things matter. No, 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 no. Where is it? See that right there? Had to come over. I mean, it's just like. It's not, just not a lot of room, is it, man? But it matters. Just do the best you can. That's what you do, the best you can. Okay, so let me see if I can uh, speed up here. On the right side, on the right side. Yeah. On the left side. Oh, you can do a bunch. It's this hose. It's kind of weird. Right side. Oh, yeah. Left side. Ah. Yikes. Oh. You know, frustrated. Just imagine doing this with a nail. There you go, that's how you start out. Here it is. Get the right angle. <laughs> you get the right angle. On my right side. Good. Oh, yeah. Just. Cool. Now we've got to, uh, after I get all the frames, 
done. The next lesson is uh, pressing wax foundation to fill this order. And then, oh, that's cool. You learn a lot there in that, that little lesson. Coming up, you know, if I'm going to build, I'm building a hive set for somebody. You know, we're, we're good at that. I like, I like what I do. The hand work, the wood work, the wax work. I like that. Keeps my skills up, you know. Cool. Okay. On my right side. Oh, yeah. Left side. My. Of course, you want the meat of your hand out of the way, you know. I don't want a Brad shoot. <laughs> At the, doc the doctor say, Mr. Davis, what happened? <laughs> I was neglectful. <laughs> and I decided to shoot a brad into my hand. <laughs> Boy, don't you know, that'd go quite a distance into the meat of your hand, too. Boy, that would hurt. Man. Okay. <laughs> That's where. Okay, right side. Oh, boogers is, okay, okay, I'm going to, now, I did another one, if you can see that, I don't know, let's see, oh, let's see, let's see if you can see, maybe, maybe I'm not, I'm going to take you up just a tad, whoops, whoops. Ooh, I think that's probably good. You ever notice when you're watching bee videos, a lot of times the beekeepers doing the lesson to put their ugly mug in the face. Now, maybe some of you don't mind. I, I'm not, I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird. I, I'm not out to promote my face. I want the lesson. Focus, focus on the lesson, please. So in a lot of our videos, you won't see me in my face. That's, that's by design. On the lesson. Watch, watch a beekeeper's hands, his, his, his or her hand movements. Whether it's this or uh, working with the bees, yeah, very, very important. Right side. Come on, come on here. A lot of people lost bees. No, nope, no. Nope. Ugh, come on. Ooh. Don't be downcast, you know. I know, you know, to a new to a newer beekeeper, it's a big deal, and I understand that. I understand that. Sometimes we know why they died or left. Sometimes we don't. The question is you have to have enough strategies. And enough knowledge to, to over, overcome that. That's okay. That's why we teach sustainable beekeeping. A lot of the, a lot of the traditional stuff will, it hobbles you. And you don't, you don't know it until somebody tells you the difference. Like in our frames, since we're working with frames, we don't use uh, wires. No, no wires, not necessary. I can't, uh, when I have a queen cell on a frame, I can't cut through a wire. If I want to cut the cell out and use it, I can't cut through a wire. Then I've got to monkey around the wire. And the uh, support that's given in a frame 
by a wire is only temporary anyway until the bees attach the wax comb. And then when it comes to spin honey, people get confused. Here comes another one. They say, oh no, it has to be supported. No, 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 no. The critical part of supporting comb in a spin is the temperature of your room when you're spinning. Wax melts at 120. Wax will soften and blow out. It's called a blowout. Poof. Blows out at 110. So, so why would you spin honey when it's so darn hot in the in the room, right? 90 to 95 is optimal spin temperature. We spin we spin a lot of comb that's got nothing in it, not even fishing lines, just a tab frame. And sometimes we do get a blowout. No big deal. The bees will fix it out, but it's not very often. The first one that happened, the first time it happened, it, yep, it will blow your mind. <laughs> you go, whoa, what was that? That's all right. No, we just use fishing line. And we made a number of videos on how to do that. You can go to our uh, you, main YouTube. We have two YouTube channels. Main YouTube channel is under Ken Davis. Secondary channel is under Little Creek Bee Ranch. Don't ask me why we have two. Well, it was a long time ago. Okay, here we go. Last one. Oh. <laughs> All right. There we go. Cool beans. 22. What is that? 37 minutes and I was even teaching. That's cool. Okay, so 37 of those babies. No, 20. Sorry. No, 22. Poof. 37 minutes. So, so I have to do, I have to do some more. So that's okay. Check it out. Um, there's 22. I have to do... 30. Um, the lady has ordered uh, a deep and a medium and then two more mediums. So that's okay. So I have a matched, like you know, the they go in the same way. However you want to do it. Sometimes the boards are just a little, little bowed. It's all right. No biggie. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's got to be functional. Okay, so I did 22. So I need eight more, right? Not hard. 30. So there's a five, six, seven, eight. Yes, the Okie Beekeeper can count. Two, four, six, eight. Da da. Yeah. Not a problem. But this is what it's like. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if you're doing like part of a set, a partial set, you want to scooch it to an end because it's tight. It's tighter. It'll, it'll hold them better. Rather than be out here in the middle, it'll be wobbly. Little tips and tricks. 22 and 8. It's 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That, you know, easy. And uh, that means I have to come over here. Oh, sorry. And I have to get uh, right down here below you. Four bottoms, four and fours of heat. One, two, three, four. <laughs> four. And let's see. I'm on. Okay, I think we're done. <sighs> uh, pressing of the wax is actually more interesting. So keep watching. Little bit, 
little dab do you or you'll be wiping up lots of glue and we don't need to do that okay uh, now it 22 and 8 there we go Little sticks. Okay, watch this. Here's here's a trick. We're going to go right here. What the heck happened? <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Right here to the end. There we go. Yeah, they'll be cradled in there. Now, here's a tip, if you're watching. Some of you out there might have already thought of this. This that you see me do, and then uh, going ahead and putting a wax foundation in. Here's a tip. That's a good side business. You hear that? That's a good little side business if you're just like, you, you don't even have to have any bees to do that. Why is why do I say that? People are so busy these days. They're super busy. Everybody is, and they don't have so much time to sit down and put all this stuff together. And if they if they know of somebody that does this or has a bunch of extra, you can charge three to five dollars per frame. I wouldn't go over five, and I wouldn't go under three because you're using your handwork to put it all together, glue it, staple it. Put the wax in foundation and they're ready to go. And you can even put a box together if you want. But I'm saying, out it goes. That's a good little side business because people need them and they do not have the time to put them all together. Ha, there you go. Now, watch this. Ooh, that didn't go down. Um. <laughs> oh, no way. I, I am empty. Holy mackerel. Empty staples. Um, you might look at that and go, ah, oh, poo, I'm not going to do that. No, 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 now. The principle is a lot doing a little is a big business a lot doing a little so let's say you put the frame together and put the wax in and all that and it was five dollars a piece which is legitimate times ten that's fifty bucks well you know that's to somebody else's boon because they're ready to go <sighs> well okay so times how many boxes and it's deceiving that's my point to you. It's deceiving. Don't 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 kill it. <laughs> don't kill that little idea until you do some math and think it through. If you want to go to three, that's up to you. To three, I would tend to stay around five, particularly if I'm uh, pressing all the wax. You don't have to press the wax to do that. You could order you could order what I call uh, brood size foundation, medium thick, no wires, wireless. Okay, just saying, way back when I was learning, my bee teacher told me, Kendall, you got to decide which way you want to take beekeeping. I said, what? <laughs> He's talking about bee. No, no. He said, no. Are you going to sell pollen? Are you going to sell honey? Are you going to sell bees? Are you going to sell wood, hives? What, what is it you're going to do? And you just kind of sit there and the brain just starts spinning. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, man. There's wonderful security in beekeeping. It just depends upon how you put it together. Never despise the mustard seed. Uh -uh. Don't despise small beginnings. 
No, no. Some people, now this is pretty cool. This is a little more advanced. Some people go to the trouble to build beautiful uh, cedar hives. I mean, like gorgeous, like stunningly beautiful. Holy crap, I'm not putting bees in there. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not setting that outside. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, it's so beautiful. It's like, you're going to actually put that outside. <laughs> I'd have to build some kind of tube. It, it stays inside the house and we'll have a tube. Uh, bees can go through the tube. <laughs> the weather destroy my beautiful life. That's, I've seen some of them. They're, they're stunning. They, they bring a penny? Well, they yeah, are because they're putting the handwork in it. You bet. Some people will paint beautiful pictures on the white boxes. That's cool, too, if you have the gift for painting. I know my daughter, my middle daughter does, Melody. Super gift. You don't, you don't, you don't have to have bees to do some of this stuff. The demand is there. The need is there. That's my point. That's my point. The demand is there. The need is there. I had, I've heard this statement before. Uh, you can't make much money in beekeeping. <laughs> I just, I just laugh and go, mm, okay. <laughs> I guess beauty's in the eye of the beholder, man. <laughs> depends upon, <laughs> depends upon your experiences, I guess. That's great stuff. I love it. Man. I love teaching, teaching classes. You'll come out to Inola, Kendall. He'll be age ninety-two. He'll still be teaching. <laughs> It's awesome, man. When you love something, man, it's just awesome. Make sure I have the right. I gotta make sure I have the right staple gutter. Okay, almost done here. Boom. <laughs> ah. Yeah, these. They do chew up in there. Okay, come on now. Okay, that's done. The one thing I have learned over the years is beekeeping is very deceiving. It doesn't look like you could do much. Doesn't look like the bees are going to make much. Doesn't look like you'd sell much. Gosh. Always deceiving. Better than it seems. More than you'd think. Okay, all right, here we go, coming up on an hour. All right, cool, Let's see if I can get it done. All right, oh, <laughs> that scare you? Scared me, <laughs> a piece of wood shot in my arm. Woo, man, that'll wake you up. <laughs> you don't want that, man. <laughs> oh my God, oh, I gotta focus. Come on, folks, man. There it is. <laughs> Fat side. Done. Okay, come on here. Come on. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Tips and tricks. All kinds. Tips and tricks, all kinds. When it comes to wax pressing, that's a big one. Yeah, lots of tips and tricks in wax works. Call it wax works. Yeah. You watch, watch it done. Let's see this way. Yeah. It's kind of like um, making divinity. The weather, humidity matters. Hmm. Not too cold. Not too terribly hot. Hey, hey, this is this is beekeeping, man. 
Now we don't uh, get into, um, hold on. We don't cut our own frames. Like I said, we get them from Man Lake. I don't have the tools, fancy stuff, the time. They're, they're relatively cheap, 80, about 80 to 90 cents a piece. And if you take care of them, last you a long time. So, so I don't need to do that. Come on now, don't be, don't do this. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll get one at a shoot and bite the wood. Mm, that's frustrating. Okay, we're good. Good to go. Okay. Oh, I hope you learned something here, you know. I don't often show this part of beekeeping. It's the wood shop stuff, the Geppetto stuff, you know, getting the wood shop done. Okay, do you know what I did? Okay, I did it. There we go, 30, done. In, in, in 50 minutes, I was preset, pre-stage, 50 minutes, so that's, that's not terrible bad. All right, so. Here's what we did. See if we can do this. No, no, no. Okay. This is bright light. One went in there. Da, 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 da. Okay. Did, sorry. One there. And one there. That's all you need. It didn't come out anywhere. That's cool. One down there. And one. Right there, and then the horizontal inch and a quarter brad went there, and the next one, and that's what we did. Okay, you know, so this is called a wedged, if I turn it this way, wedge top, wedge top, grooved bottom, and, and we like these the most. Now why do we say that? Let's see if I can, uh, I don't have, I thought I'd have a good example. I don't have a good example. We like the fact that the wax can rest in the wedge, rest down in the wedge. It can rest in the wedge. That way the, the, the problem we have is when we put in the wax foundation on the big frames, it wants to slip out. So if I put a half a sheet in here, it will want to fall, slip, right? So the wedge doesn't pinch it in, doesn't pinch it in tight enough, doesn't pinch it in tight enough. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll call it quits right there. If you have questions, you can text me, email me, whatever, comment at the bottom of the video. Check out the personal advisor program for learning some deeper stuff about sustainable beekeeping. Ebook library is pretty cool personal advisor program that's the tops that's that's where the good stuff is apvox smart monitor you'll be seeing some more lessons coming out about details of apvox smart monitor rocks absolutely is awesome can't can't walk away from that one that is just killer cool really need to learn more about that I always encourage students to learn more about acoustic beekeeping all right so i'm going to bid you adieu have a great spring and summer I hope you learned some cool stuff. Be looking for some more cool videos coming from Little Creek Bee Ranch. Have an awesome day.